Welcome back. This is another exciting episode of Mr. Takeda Teaches Algebra. I'm your host, Mr. Takeda, and I'm going to teach you some algebra right now. This is lesson 3.1 on functions. And this, uh, this, this lesson, there's not a lot of calculations to do. It's just this, uh, some vocabulary terms and some ideas in terms of the definition of some of these words. And the first word we have to deal with is functions. What is the function? To do that, I'm going to start back with this word called relation. What is a relation? A relation is a set of ordered pairs. So we uh, think of set and set notation. Ordered pairs means a pair of numbers in parentheses separated by a comma. And since we're listing things in the set, we'll separate those with a comma as well. So there's a, a very, uh, very rudimentary um, example of a relation, a set of ordered pairs, two ordered pairs, a set. Now, a function is a relation where each member of the domain is assigned to one and only one, and make sure you underline that one and only one member of the range. You're asking yourself, what's domain and range? Okay, so we'll talk about domain and range here. Domain is the set of the first values, the x values. The range is the set of the second values, the y values, in those ordered pairs. x comes first, then y. So let's take a look at an example here. Um, a function is relation. So I'm going to say, um, let's say 1, 2, comma, 2, 3, comma, 3, 4. Okay. So my domain here, domain, is the set of the first values. And the first values are my x values, right? 1, 2, and 3. The range is the output values, the second values, the y values, 2, 3, and 4. So when we say that each member of the domain is assigned to one and only one member of the range, what are we talking about? Let's look at this example here that I, that I wrote in here. This member of the domain 1 is assigned only to 2. This member of the domain 2 is assigned only to 3. This member of the domain 3 is assigned only to 4. So right now, this is a function because every member of the domain is assigned to only one member of the range. Well, what if I had another ordered pair in here on 2, 5? Okay, well, now I've got this uh, 2 going to a 3 and 2 going to 5. Now this is not a function. Another way I think of this is, if I was to ask you, um, if I was to ask you for the output, if I gave you the input and asked you for the output, could you uh, be sure what the answer was? If I said it was 1, if I said the, uh, the input's 1, you would say 2, all right? 1, 2. If I said 3, you would say 4. But if I said 2, you're not sure if the answer is 3 or if the answer is 5. So this is not a function when I have this type of situation where a member of the domain is assigned to more than one member of the range. Okay, let's move on. Get all this in your notes. I know it's kind of a lot, um, but we have those ideas. We want to make sure we get those ideas on our head. Uh, functions can be described many ways by an equation, input-output table, words, graph, set of ordered pairs. We've already uh, looked at ordered pairs, but let's take a look at this thing here. This is a graph, um, obviously. But why is this a function? How does this graph show it's a function? Well, each of these points is what? Each of these points is an ordered pair. So 0, 8, 1, 6, 2, 4, um, 5, 2, and 4, uh, 0. Okay, so this graph becomes a set of ordered pairs, um, and we can see that for each member of the domain, there's only one member of the range, so this is a function. So we've seen it as a graph, as a set of ordered pairs, and an input-output table. An input-output table basically uh, looks like this. Now, you can go horizontally or vertically. I like them vertically um, because they look more like ordered pairs. So my domain is 0, 1, 2, wait, I made a mistake here. 
zero, one, two, three, two. This should be a three here, sorry. Three, two, sorry. I found it. Okay, so zero, one, two, three, four. It's my domain. My domain and my range would be eight, six, four, two, zero. Okay, that's a zero, sorry. That is a zero. Okay, so uh, that's what we call an input output table. I'm going to leave you with a question what's the equation that represents uh, the input and output here? Let's see if you can come up with that. And uh, let's move on. Um, uh, this, these are um, input output tables here, and we want to see if we can determine whether these represent a function. So I'm going to spend a little time on this because I want. To be, I want you to be really sure uh, what a function is and what it is not. So in this case, our ordered pair is 0, 8, 1, 8, 2, 8, 3, 8, 4, 8. Ask yourself, is this a function? You might be seeing all these 8s here and thinking, no, this can't be a function. But let's go back to the definition. Every member of the input is assigned to one and only one member of the range. 0 is only assigned to 8. 1 is only assigned to 8. 2 is only assigned to 8, 3 is only assigned to 8, and 4 is only assigned to 8. This is a function. But what about if these are reversed? Well, 8, now, if I, again, ask yourself the question. If I give you the input 8, can you tell me what output it is? You really can't because there's so many in this case. There's five different, there's five different, uh, there's five different uh, outputs for the one input. So in this case, we, we uh, can't know, so this is not a function. Okay, this first one's a function. This is not a function. This is a good example because kids get confused when they see all these eights. They always assume that it's not a function. But it depends on the definition of function. Let's take a look at some other ways we can represent functions. This is called a mapping diagram. This is called a mapping diagram. And it... Uh, lists all the members of the uh, of the domain to the left, all the members of the range to the right, and they draw arrows between the uh, between the pairs. So you only have to list uh, uh, you only have to list uh, the the uh, members of the domain and range only once in each box here. Is the is this one a a function? That's the question. Is it a function? And hopefully you're saying the answer is no. Because right here, you see I have 3, 10, and 3, 11. The domain value of 3 has been assigned to 10 and 11. So this is not a function. What about this graph? We've looked at uh, what looks like part of this graph before. Is this a function? And hopefully you're seeing what's happening right here and right here. Because this ordered pair here would be 5, 4, and this one is 5, 5 above it. So that member of the domain 5 has two members of the range assigned to it. Over here, I've got 7, 5, and 7, 8. The domain member of 7 has two different range values assigned to it, so not a function. This idea of one above the other, we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. So make sure all this stuff is in your notes. Let's talk about the vertical line test. This is what I was just talking about here. The vertical line test, uh, you can use the vertical line test either mentally or physically. And it says, essentially, that a graph represents a function when no vertical line passes through more than one point on the graph. So here's our graph. The red line is this vertical line they're talking about. So just kind of imagine, in this case, the line moving back and forth through here. If it only contacts one point of the graph at a time, it is a function. In this graph with this curve, this vertical line is touching the point, uh, the graph there, and there simultaneously. So this is not a function. This x value, whatever it is, this x value, whatever that is, has two different y values assigned to it. That one that one. So it's not a function. Vertical line test. Remember this vertical line test. 
So we'll take a look at an example here. Is the first one uh, a vertical line? To, uh, is the first example A a function? And the answer here is no, because a vertical line here and here will pass through more than one point at a time. What about B? Well, B certainly is a uh, B certainly is a uh, a function because as it passes vertical line through the graph, it only contacts one point on the graph at a time. So this one is a function indeed. Okay. Find the domain and range. Um, this is really important. This is going to wrap up our session here, I think. We have what we call um, these separate points here. We call these we call this a discrete. I think I'm going to spell this right. There's two different discretes, and this is the one. Uh, discrete points means separate. Discrete means separate. So the domain, or let's, let's look at these uh, uh, points here. This is um, negative 4, negative 2. This is negative 1, 0. This is 1, 2. And this is 3, 4. Okay, so since there, these are discrete points, my domain is negative 4, negative 1, 1, and 3. My range is negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. Okay, let's talk about this continuous graph here. This is a continuous graph because it covers all the points in between like the major integers, right? So um, how, do we, how do we save the domain? Well, the domain, again, is a set of x values. So what is the lowest x value over here? The lowest x value is negative 2. And the highest x value is positive 3. So we write it this way. x is greater than negative 2 and less than 3. And they could be fractions. They can be, you know, little tiny... Uh, um, decimal numbers. The range, same thing but with y. Uh, what's my lowest y value? Down here at negative 1. See, this is my lowest y value, negative 1. And, oh, I, I forgot these are including, sorry. And same thing here, less than or equal to. And the y value is going to be less than or equal to positive 2. There we go. For continuous, it looks like that. For discrete, it looks like that. Whew. That's it for now. Another little puzzle for you. Uh, I'll see you in class. I know there was a lot of information there. And again, it's just ideas right now and really definitions of some terms. Uh, I'll see you in class next time. Thanks a lot. Have a great rest of your day.